Welcome to CCRPG, where we open up our virtual table and play games with some good friends. I'm Bob, and I'll be running Lancer, an RPG by Miguel Lopez and Tom Parkinson Morgan. You can find it on itch.io. Last session, the DBC crew, disguised as the mercenary crew Murder of Crows, arrived at Contest. Over the following days, they met members from the other competing teams, drew lots for their starting position in the first trial of Contest, and surreptitiously uh, acquired some information on their task. Today, our pilots are booked for their turn. We return to the team as they prepare to load their mechs onto the lift that will bring them up to the same door they watched other teams disappear behind for their challenge. This is your final opportunity to change anything before you begin. Curry prepares to see you off from the hangar, and Jessica is logged in and waiting to provide support. Hello, pilots. Hello. 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 Anyone have butterflies in their stomach? Mm, no. No, but I'm ready to shoot drones out of the sky. <laughs> I feel like mine are more moths than butterflies. You have nano drones in your stomach. It is the future. They they help with digestion. <laughs> <laughs> God, that sounds terrible. I think I might need to see a doctor. Nanobiotic? Wait, wait I am the doctor. Yeah, nanobiotics. <laughs> You should tell us all about it. Please don't. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I think uh, we last time uh, we kind of discussed what Astro had seen on his little reconnaissance mission, which honestly wasn't that much. Just he knows that there are like drones involved, and they come out of secret vents. Uh, so we're just gonna, you know. We're going to see uh, what our objective is and once we get in and, and play it by ear. But I think one thing Astro will know is where his vet was, like where he was hiding behind. He'll be able to pin that location down once he's inside. Isn't that right, Bob? That is what I told you, yes. Cool. Yeah, so... uh. Astro will uh, uh, get inside his mech, um, powered on, ready to go. Yeah, I mean, right. same. I don't have anything else to prepare, I don't think, so. Yeah, Evelyn uh, pulls down her um, lift, shotguns are coughing, <clears throat> gets on, and gets on board. All right. As the four of you mount up into your mechs, uh, you see the normal uh, kind of load-in sequence, whatever all of you have set up as your mech begins to ready itself. Um, Curry, uh, make sure that the last of you know whatever tethers you guys have and whatever fuel devices you guys have uh, attaching you to the hangar are all loosed. Um, waves you all off, and uh, you guys get your mechs loaded onto the lift that leads upstairs. Um, as you uh, assemble yourselves onto the lift, uh, your connection uh, between the four of you and back at the DBC connects. Um, you are loaded up uh, as the lift raises from the hangar, you watch as there are other teams watching you leave. Uh, some teams that have already gone and some teams that have yet to go uh, watch as the murder of crows uh, ascends, uh, getting ready for their turn. Um, you watch as the floor above you kind of slides aside uh, and uh, the four of your mechs are kind of lifted into that little auditorium area where, again, um, a quick scan of your sensors shows a, a variety of organic beings in the room behind you. Um, you imagine more uh, spectators waiting to see how you all do after you head in for your test. Um and in front of you, uh, the bay doors open into the large contest area um, that you watched everyone else go into. 
uh, as you kind of walk forward and the door closes behind you, uh, I will transition you all to your active battle scene. Ooh, I don't like that, those craters. Well, <laughs> astute observation, Evelyn. There are <laughs> giant uh, scar marks in the ground from what appear to have been explosions that haven't been fully fixed. Um, as you walk in, the first thing you will notice is that this is a large basically concrete room um, with various like weird paddings on the wall. It almost looks like a scaled up like gymnasium, um, but it is all hardened like steel floors, um, poured concrete walls. Um, it is it is almost bunker like, if not for the vast amount of empty space that it is. Um, there is no terrain in here, apart from what you notice is uh, an odd sort of pattering patterning to the floor tiles. Um, all over the walls, uh, the left, the walls to the left and the walls to the right, even the walls to the rear of the room, um, there are what appear to be uh, flaps that open up, um, some closer towards the ground, some higher on the walls. But uh, in kind of five different areas, uh, kind of near you on either side, far away from you on either side and against the back wall, there are a variety of ground level and um, kind of uh, like five spaces up, especially uh, level hatches on the walls um, that don't give any indication as to what's behind them. Uh, additionally, as soon as you all walk in and the doors close behind you, uh, you will see as five gigantic uh, screens uh, are basically imposed onto the area around you. Again, kind of on the high walls near you on both sides, on the far walls uh, on both sides, and on the back wall, just these jumbo, like, Megatron level like stadium sports arena kind of screens. Uh, each and every one of them is one of the five council members observing contest. Um, so you see uh, all five of the people you've met before, Ethic, Opie, Doc, Nosla, and Grime. Um, and you see as they're kind of um, spaced out, like evenly spaced out. There's an even amount of space in between each of their screens from each other. But you'll note there are many, many more screens in between all of them that are all showing a blank seat. As if there are like 15 more seats that could be occupied that are currently being unused. Um, you will note... That uh, as uh, this all happens, uh, a few um, kind of digital display things happen as well, uh, almost like a banner going around the upper stage of the area just below all of the screens showing the people observing you. There's a little band that's in uh, black and yellow stripes uh, that says betting begins that just seems to circle around the outside of the arena. Um, now I'm going to give you some information first players, you may position yourself anywhere within the player deployment zone. There is a zone on the far left of the screen. You will be able to decide wherever in there you want to start. You can decide that after I explain to you how this is going to work. Um, the, uh, observers come on the screen, but it is not their voice who comes over the sc uh, who comes over the loudspeaker for you. It is the voice of Losa Mar, uh, the attendant, uh, who checked you all in to contest, uh, over this, over the, uh, loud comm, uh, she says, uh, welcome, uh, murder of crows. Uh, this will be your, uh, entry into the first, uh, leg of contest. Uh, you will be, uh, uh portraying, uh, for our five observers here, uh, a standard escort mission as judged by our team. Uh, you will be judged by speed of completion by uh, intactness of the package when delivered, 
um, the efficiency uh, uh, and and uh, the efficient use of uh, any sort of uh, equipment that you may have come in with. Um, and uh, on top of all of that, uh, every one of our observers will be additionally judging you uh, on their own private uh, recognizance. Criteria. Uh, criteria, thank you, uh, criteria uh, in what they want to see uh, from a prospective employee. Um, you will be given no direction on how to do this other than do what you would do if this was your actual mission. Um, the rules are as follows. On the far end of the field from you, there is a uh, object uh, it will be displaying on all of your sensors as X4. You must escort X4 back to your entry zone uh, and extract with it. Uh, you will have, uh, an, uh, you will have, she says, an amount of time, uh, <laughs> but that amount of time uh, doesn't really need to mean anything to you other than. Um, you have eight rounds. So cool. whatever eight rounds means in terms yeah. of time is what she tells you. Uh, you have eight rounds <laughs> to do this. <laughs> um, the faster you do it, the more efficiently you do it. Um, and depending on what the criteria of our members are, uh, maybe uh, other things will be taken into account as well. Do you have any questions before we begin? Hmm. I have none. No. Well, nothing I, I, here. I have nothing. Your honor. <laughs> All right. Now Bob is going to come in and give you uh, system-based information on what you need to do this okay. mission. Um, the way an escort mission works is there will be an object or a person um, that has 10 HP per level of size. It has evasion 10, defense 10, uh, evasion uh, 10, and e-defense 10, and no armor. When you start your turn adjacent to the objective, it will move with you during your standard movement if it can do so. If the objective is ever adjacent to two characters of opposing sides at the same time, it will not move until that is no longer the case. Does that make sense? I have a question. So, um, yes. So if there yeah, are one more time. Oh, go ahead, Chuck. I was going to say, if there's two people on one side and one person opposing, does this still if, apply if or, it, or if is it ever, a majority role? If ever there are two people from opposing teams adjacent to it, it will not move. Okay. Two it doesn't more. matter how many or how few. If there's ever two teams touching it at the same time, it doesn't move. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, uh, you said if we're adjacent to it, and obviously another person, the person from another team is not, it will move move with us. It will move movement? with you during your standard movement okay. if it can do so. Got it. Got it. Uh, this is important <clears throat> to know because. By what you can tell from the object, which is like a tiny walker mech. Basically, it's like a little two-legged walker mech on the other side of the field. It has like a little drone antenna sticking up from it. It has no weapons on it. It's basically two giant legs and um, like a computer system, right? So it's like it's itself. It's like a large drone, basically. It does not appear to have jump jets or any flying things on it in any way. So unless you can carry it in flight, it will not fly with you if you move. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so standard movement alone, so not boosting. No, correct? it will not yeah. follow you through a boost. Okay. That's what I just wanted to confirm. Mm -hmm. You can but boost it, it, to it, but <clears throat> if you start your turn adjacent to it, it will follow you during your standard movement. But it goes our movement speed? It goes your movement speed. And it has no limit to how many times it can move on a round. Uh, okay, so so like we could do like a baton pass type thing yeah, if yeah. it would work. Technically, yes. 
except for me it, and my three movement yeah, speed. <laughs> it, it, it does not get its own turn. So it only moves when uh, a person moving it adjacent to it starts its move. So technically, it can move as many times as you can get it to move in a single round if you line it up perfectly. But there will be things to stop you from doing that as well. I suspect right. we'll be taking advantage of Ferris Lash a bit too, because that'll give us a little extra movement. Well, not both, for, both for the target and any and any opposing mechs. So, like, if we do end up in situations where we have two people next to it, I guess in theory you could just pull that person could, away and then. Well, you move can't. It out. You pull it. True. True. <laughs> um, that is also an option. Um, does the uh, the escort objective count as an allied character? No, it is on its own team. Okay. So it's neutrally aligned. Yes, it is a neutral character. <clears throat> okay, so I couldn't use my tactical simulation to reduce damage on it. Uh, for the purpose I, of movement, is the crater something that it would not be able to move over, so we'd have to go around it? The craters themselves, uh, they are shallow. Um, okay. They are not even difficult terrain, um, but they are heavily scorched areas. Um, cool. So whatever you do with that is up to <clears> you. <throat> it is a shallow crater in each of those zones, but they look heavily damaged. Um, and the question I was going to answer is, um, I will be just following the rules verbatim. It is considered independent. It is not the ally of you, but it is also not the ally of whatever enemies might appear. It is on its own team. Can I consider it my ally? <laughs> if not, uh, we will have to determine based on the wording of any specific role that comes up. My mine is just you know my uh, prophetic interjection. Yeah, whenever someone takes damage, I get to roll something and say, oh, actually, it's a simulation. Uh, um, what I will state in that manner is if you want to consider it an ally and extend it that benefit, um, the thing you imagine will want to protect itself is all I will give you. Okay. It does not want to explode. <laughs> yeah. As Are we sure about us? that? <laughs> <laughs> You don't know. Maybe it's a bomb. There's got to be a reason there's craters out there, right? I mean, we, we have a history with exploding packages, right? It's true. Uh, remind me again. Is this what one is a its, camera? What is its agility, Bob? Uh, evasion, you mean? Uh... I guess it, it so, would be yeah. a contest. It would be a contested agility role. What you're what you're talking about with the fair slash, right? Yeah, I'm just I'm surprised that I, I think I am talking about evasion, but the description explicitly says agility save, which is like that seems. Uh, it does not have agility. It is an object in that manner. Okay. So it would automatically fail if he fair slashed it. Right. Assumption. <laughs> it says it has 10 HP per level of size, evasion 10, e defense 10, and no armor. That is that is the only stats that the objective has. OK. All right. Would you guys, now that you understand what the objective is, like to realign yourself in any way along that left deployment zone? I am going to just move. One step forward. <laughs> Um, any any speed increment you can move out there, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Thank you. I mean, I'm not going to be the one escorting anything. <laughs> R remind me again. I think I know the answer to this, but for Ferris Lash, um, it says I choose a character within range eight. I assume that doesn't include myself. You're a character. Oh, cool. Yeah, what? I think you've you've al <laughs> you've always been able to Ferris lash yourself. I just don't think you ever did. I never did. It never occurred to me. Yeah. I feel like we established I wasn't allowed to do that, but okay. <laughs> no, the Ferris lash is a thing you throw out and then lashes something somewhere. So I could be Spider Man. 
Yeah. I mean, you're you're yeah, you could absolutely do it to yourself. Because, I mean, your your version of Ferris Lash is essentially a grappling gun, right? It is. It, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so God, yeah. I can clear, if using all the abilities available to me, I can get half the, the map in one movement. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stay far back and just nuke things from far uh, away. That, that, will be, that might be important for you to remember in the future, Chimera, when you want to, yeah, like, rush yeah. in and engage things. 100%. Yeah. All right. Uh, I will field any other systems level questions before we get started. Um, there are certain things I can't tell you about the contest because they haven't made it clear what the answer to those are. But if you have any questions about what an escort mission is, the specifics for how it works or anything like that, I can clear that up for you. Uh, as long as it's not a camera that needs to say frozen, I think I'm good. <laughs> the last <laughs> thing I will let you know is how extraction works is while in the uh, in the zone you're starting in here, the player deployment zone, while in that zone, you can extract as a free action at the end of your turn. Um, if the objective is adjacent to a character who extracted and isn't contested, it is also safely extracted. So even if you get it into the extraction zone, if it's ever if it's contested, you can't extract it. You need to break the contested first. But it does not need to be in the extraction zone. Just us. And it, it just, needs to be adjacent to us. It just to needs us. to be adjacent to someone who safely extracts. Okay. okay. Yeah. When you say contested, you mean like that situation of two parties? Like if an enemy is adjacent, adjacent to it as well. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That is that is contested. Got it. Um okay. Uh, I think that makes sense. All right. Then okay. pilots. We will begin. It is the beginning of combat. Who wants to go first? I guess. Um, go ahead. So, so I, I assume for, from our perspective, uh, the announcer says, you may begin now. Oh, yeah. Let me let right? me do it in character. Losamar says, now that you are ready, you may begin uh, and then the thing that is the yellow and black stripe around the outside that, that says betting now, uh, it changes to red and black stripes. And on there, it just says, uh, um, it says uh, mission on. Astro's like, I wish I knew there was betting. I would have put all our money down on us. Maybe next time, Astro. All righty. All right. Who wants to go first? You guys go ahead and go first. I mean, I'm just going to make a beeline unless people have something else they like to do first. There's no um, enemies to shoot. <laughs> to uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so if oh, you want to make I, a beeline I, for it. I know what I could do. Um, I'll go. Um, go All right. So let me activate you. Comet, you're up. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, so where is the vent that I was watching from? Uh, the vent that you were watching from is, let me see if it'll let me draw correctly. Uh, nope, that's a that's a zone. You didn't explode. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Ignore it. Uh, so it. There My we legs. go. Uh, it is back here. This is where the vent you saw was. Okay. It is on um, that, is on the hex. Uh, far to the back and right from you. Okay. And, um, oops, wrong thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, the <Big> range <laughs> on that. That is like. That is uh, 30. 32 from you. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is. Uh, and five up. Uh, you know for a fact you were in one of the elevated um yeah. hatches okay first of all uh, no need to be shy about it i'm gonna activate my protocol um uh or activate my core system i should say which is a protocol um this will give me tactical simulation so 
uh, it triggers whenever an allied character in line of sight takes damage from another character in line of sight. That's why I was asking about allied characters. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, and I am going to use my uh, simulacrum action. Um, oh, by the way, uh, I think we talked about this briefly. My new NHP is called Kubrick. Uh, it's basically like Hitchcock 2.0. Yes, yeah, no, we, we did it. go over it. This one is slightly meaner to you. Yes, this one is <laughs> slightly meaner to me. <laughs> exactly. Incredible. Um, all right, and I'm going to place a simulacrum. Uh, uh, so it's uh, blast area three. Can I draw this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah, I, I could also put one down for you if you need a blast three. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to move it a, a little bit since it doesn't have to. Uh, you will have to place it in the center of a hex. Oh, got it. OK, I'll move it here. Um, is that vent? Is it um, up in is it up in like above the floor or is it floor level? Uh, what vent? Uh, the the one that Asher was in. That's what I told you before. It's five up. You know, five it was up. one of the okay. elevated um, yeah. hatches. Gotcha. Um, there Sorry, are a bunch of hatches that. along the ground at ground level, and there are a bunch of hatches at about five in the air above you, five okay. spaces up. Can I place it like five in there? Um, it will not, I think, cover the same amount of space on the ground if you do so. Let's Let me make see it easy it and just say it only covers the ones in the air then. And we don't have to worry about the ones on the ground. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I'm going to go ahead and say you're fine. We're not going to worry about it for terms of that. If it's if it's within how. I'm, I'm going to say you placed it right in the middle. So okay. it can get the bottom and top from it. Okay. Because that's what you wanted to do. We'll say you can do that. I don't see a reason why you can't. You just know that it can fly high enough that it could go over top of that if it went up to the ceiling. But if it starts where it comes out, it will be within it. Got it. Um, am I getting any information now or is it uh, obscured? Uh to me until they leave their little uh home it constructs a perfect real-time and fully active 3d model range 50 including moving characters all rendered in lovingly extreme detail full visibility on the effective area but doesn't count as line of sight you know the statistics weapons systems hostile characters within the affected area don't go ba -ba -ba. yes uh you detect three things based on your placement Okay, good. Um, you detect the drone that you saw before in one of the raised vents. Um, you detect uh, two other drones that you have not seen prior to this. Um, Got it. What information do you want? Because it will be complicated for me to just tell yeah, you all of yeah. this. Yeah, I'll just ask for a few things. So the, the big, big drone that I was behind... What mm -hmm. is its structure and what is its HP? Uh, its HP is one and its structure is one. Oh, okay. Uh, and the other two, what are their structures in HP? One, 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 one. One, 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 one. All right. Um, uh, let me just ask what... Uh, no cell statistics weapons. Uh, what I can give you the... an overview of e what each one is generally. Um, the one that is up in the air is a controller, is a controller drone that tries to suppress people with its with its uh, machine gun fire. Mm -hmm. um, the one of the ones on the ground is like a little panther robot um, that tries to sneak up on people and tear the crap out of them. Uh, and then the other one that's on the ground is a little hacker robot uh, that tries to fuck with your systems. All right. 
is that's that all do you do you think that's sufficient for that what is you want absolutely it's sufficient yeah so you Perfect. you detect three different types of drones in those walls okay i'll relay that information to everyone else so uh just assume your characters heard what uh i heard just now um cool uh and then he's going to move uh here uh and then he's going to boost uh because that was oh, a quick hold action on. i took hey buddy yeah, I was uh -oh. going to say, why did you go adjacent to it? Yeah, well, say. I, I thought as long as I don't go on it. <laughs> uh, too close. Time to reveal what was on that tile, uh, which is an explosive mine. Whenever you enter adjacency with a mine, it explodes. Yay. Thank you, Astro, for clearing the path. Well, see See, I, now now we know that. That's more information. <laughs> All characters within a burst one. Oh, it targeted you. Isn't that nice? Oh, uh, within cute. burst one from it must pass an agility save. Okay. Uh, agility save. Uh, let me do that. Uh, do I just roll just my roll. agility? Roll your agility. All righty. I rolled a 16. You pass. You will only take oh, half nice. damage. Uh, you take half of three explosive damage. Okay. Uh, remind me, down or up? It's always you. round up in Lancer. Okay, so two. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Takes me down to 11 HP. Ouch. That was embarrassing. That's, that's He's rough. officially half of my health. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, boo, 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 just go ahead and. Aha! Now you know where those came from. <laughs> now we now we uh, now we get it. Um, <laughs> it seems like the big scorch marks on the ground were there because past people exploded. I don't go like how they figure. get bigger. Okay, so that means some of them are bigger ranges. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, and then I'll boost uh, to move another six. Uh, so. And remember, you can go through the craters. So. Or okay. Yeah. So you don't need to go around it. Got it. Um, there. That's that's how you do it. Boom. All righty. That's it for old Astro. All right, old, Comet, old Astro. end of your turn. There are no apparent enemies. Kestrel, Chimera, or Orion, who's next? Uh, I can go next. So, uh, thank you. Chimera, you're up. Yeah. So let's see, my movement is five. Uh, make sure I'm not dreaming that. Um, yep. <clears throat> so I'm going to move... Basically straight toward the target. So let's see one, and then I'm gonna boost. So there. Um, I probably should just one at a time in case there's some explosives. But good so far. Move and then boost. Uh, no, you're okay currently. <laughs> God, you said no. Like, oh, I'm not <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> no, you're not good so no, far. You you're explode. okay. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to uh. Whip out a um, grapple hook and grab a platform five hexes away. That's the unit of measure I'm using. And um, yeah, I'm going to move five more. All right. Sounds good. So you use your ferris lash then to pull you forward? Yep. All right. Cool beans. That's your other quick. And that is it for me. So I'll mark myself off. Uh, Kestrel, you are up. Or, it is uh, or no, wait, yeah, Kestrel can't... or Orion, sorry. Yeah, I wanted to go last, but it's, I can go now. There are two it... of you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, go yeah, ahead. sure. Uh, I'm I'm just going to move and boost a whole six. So... I am plugging along. <laughs> and that's it. All right, so you move, you boost, 
Anything else? You have like another nope. quick action? No? Okay. No, not really. <laughs> All right, then Kestrel, what are you doing? I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to move 16 and All right. uh, get next what to was your, here. What was your movement? Um, I, I'm flying over stuff. I don't know if that matters, but uh, it would have been... How high did you arc is important. Um, I'm going to go over... Prob like, I, I don't know. I guess I have to think about it. I would fly over it, but like one or two squares over, I'd say. Like how many total spaces were, how many spaces were between you and it is a good question to ask. Let's say two. Two? Then you are fine. Okay. Yep. And then I'll fly there. That's it. So you kind of in a long arc fly up and over. Do you end at ground level or are you still flying? Let's say I'm still flying. Okay. Yeah. How we need to two, say two how up, high up two, two up. up. OK, so we'll go. Boop. So you're at plus two. OK. OK, that's it. All right. We are going to move to the next round uh, in the next round. At the beginning, you all watch as four hatches open up at the various <gasps> sides of the arena. Uh, one in each deployment zone. Hello. All right, there we go. Uh, so these four appear, uh, and at the beginning of the round, uh, since you all ended the previous round, they will begin. Uh, I will start by activating the suppressor that is in, uh, the zone that Comet has drawn. Uh, this is the same drone that you got stuck behind, Comet. Ah, uh, the one... With the exhaust. Your good friend. <laughs> Aw. You're reunited. Uh, it is... Ba -ba 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 -ba. Going to move... Five. That's going to move another five. Boosting. That's a move and a boost. Uh, and then is going to use suppress. Uh, it chooses a target within line of sight, range 10. They become impaired, and the archer gains a reaction. The suppressor gains a reaction against it called moving target. Uh, it is targeting you, Chimera. You are Checks impaired. Out. Uh, let's see. So it can't be removed until it targets someone else. Uh, the effect lasts until it uses its reaction that it now has against you. Uh, uh, you would have to damage it in some way, uh, or you would have to leave its line of sight, stun it, jam it, or destroy it. Uh, it could also choose a new target, and that would clear it from you. But for as long as you are suppressed, you are impaired. And the way to imagine this is it's basically uh, flying towards you, and it has two giant like machine gun miniguns on the bottom of it. And while it's not hitting you directly, it's firing all around you in such a way it's it's trying to like keep you from progressing. Okay. In a way, I'm kind of okay with this because I think all the things I want to do don't require um, attack saves or skill checks by me. All right. Uh, that is the suppressor. It is back to your side. It does keep you from moving, though. There's no, pe there's no penalty to movement. Uh, aren't you impaired? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at immobilize. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I deliberately pulled out the sheet to make sure I wasn't going to make a mistake. Immobilize is right above impaired. 
God, it'd be awful. And they're practically the same word. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you can't tell the difference. All right. Um, let's see. um let me go. I'm gonna try and pick off okay. some of the little guys. Go for it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, All right, so we'll activate Orion. Yep. Great. I'm gonna dash forward a little bit. Um, I'm then going to barrage, and we're gonna start with the suppressor to the north. And then, depending on what happens there, we're gonna go. All right. Other one places. of the one of the four things that came out. Uh, worth saying out loud uh two flying drones uh both called suppressor on your targeting system uh a small drone uh a walker on four legs called a a blinder uh in the northeast and in the southwest a, a small two-legged drone called a rifler has appeared so those are the four enemies that have appeared this round cool All right and uh, we have no idea what they do well <laughs> You have an idea what three of them do. Also, they're named pretty straightforwardly. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the joke, yes. <laughs> so, so the blinder's blind, right? That's how it works? <laughs> no, Who they shoot missiles. Say? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> they all have pocket sand. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, just you wait. No matter what they're named, all of them cause burn damage to you. <laughs> specifically you specifically, specifically Evelyn me. it's <laughs> written in their character sheets I wouldn't have it's it any other way is Evelyn <laughs> alright uh, so we are going to barrage uh, is it is it shift target I don't remember or if you're uh, trying to target multiple uh, just target one. It's just while over top of the enemy, press the T button. Ah, uh, okay, so that's it. There we go. It's been so long. Uh, no accuracy, no difficulties, so... Uh, ten. All hit. right. Uh, with a ten... Uh, you hit the uh, flying suppressors evasion. Uh, you also take three heat yourself, yep, I believe, yep, yep. right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, you watch as your heavy pattern laser rifles, uh, the barrel of your beam just cores this suppressor and you watch it explode in mid flight and just fall out of the sky. Sick. I follow up by uh, taking my assault rifle and just swinging around and aiming at the rifler to the south. It should be within eight. Yes. Uh, well, okay, the assault rifle is ten, so that's fine. Uh, all right. So it's T and uh, seventeen. Uh, 17. Uh, doing how much damage? Three damage. Three damage. Um, so. Checking one thing. All right. Yeah, you're. Uh, three damage basically just chews right through it. You could tell it tried to take on the attack as if it wanted to try and resist it in some way, uh, but it did not seem to be able to do so. Uh, it goes down uh, and just becomes a little ball of molten, molten metal on fire. Excellent. Um, unfortunately, I can't... And if I wanted to, I'm out of range of the suppressor. So I only took two of them out, guys. I'm sorry. That's my turn. No, no, no. You did great. <laughs> Pretty good. MVP All right. right there. Let's find out what the blinder does as it burns yeah. Chimera. <laughs> I will activate the blinder. Uh, it will move to begin with. Uh, bup, bup, bup. getting used to where all the stats are on these there it is speed six uh, 
uh, it advances towards your team. Uh, and... It has... Sensors, there we go. Okay. Let's see. Chimera and Kestrel. Cool beans. Uh, Chimera, you're currently impaired, correct? That is correct. Okay, first thing it does is uh, Chimera. Uh, it is going to uh, launch a quick tech against you. Is it blind? It isn't. Oh. <laughs> Fancy that. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Not accurate. And you have no cover. Okay. So this should be a straight roll, basically. It does do have a, accuracy like, and a plus two up, attack. Hold up, hold up. I do have cover because of a uh, skirmisher. All right. Soft cover? Yes. All right. So it goes back down to a straight roll then. All right, it'll be a 14 versus your E-Defense, which I believe is a hit. I mean, anything will hit my E-Defense. Uh, it tears into your, uh, like, internal uh, heat dispersion uh, capabilities of your mech. Uh, you will take one heat immediately, and you will take an additional four heat at the start of its next turn. Is that ongoing or a one-time deal? It's a one-time deal. If it doesn't reach its next turn, then... <laughs> then it doesn't happen. Hey, guys, I got, I got your next target. <laughs> uh, and then it will turn to its next target, which will be Kestrel. Kestrel, it launches a quick tech against you. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, do you have any cover or difficulty to impose or anything like that against a tech uh, attack? I have skirmisher, so if it, I guess if it works for... So if you have soft cover, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool beans. It misses. Uh, you watch as it tries to uh, get into your optical and sensor systems uh, in order to try and uh, obscure or blind your ability to sense your surroundings. Um, but you are able to quickly deal with it. Sweet. Um, uh, any other things? All right, and it used its blind. That is its turn. Uh, the blinder is complete. Okay. Um, so both the suppressor and blinder have gone at this point, right? Yes, that is correct. All right, I'll just go next. Might as well put block on, on both of them. Um, go for so, it. So uh, let me just remember something. Comet activates. Yep, I activate. Um and okay um i am going to put lock on oh i wanted to ask real quick before when i did the simulacrum how much what was the suppressor's heat cap uh it is eight okay okay just just good but i don't think that matters actually hold on Uh, technically, because they are weak, uh, they they have zero heat capacity. Which does that mean giving them any heat over? So just hacking them, not even doing choosing an invade uh, option, just invading them. Which uh, automatically it gives says them some they heat. are immediately destroyed when they take heat from any source other than their own systems and weapons. Okay. Interesting. <clears throat> Neat. <laughs> Very neat. 
Um, all right. Uh, so I'm going to lock on the uh, blinder. Okay. Uh, and I immediately consume the lock on to invade it. Okay. Um, so I'll roll a, a tech attack. Uh, um, and what? Sorry, uh, I'm for some reason can't find it on my sheet. Uh, there it is. A tech attack. Um, with accuracy. Okay, I rolled a fourteen. A fourteen versus its e defense. Yes. Uh, that will hit. All right. So right off the bat, he takes two heat. Do I even uh, bother you watch with an invade as option? The blinder yeah. uh, overheats and collapses to the ground. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. Um. All right, and uh. That's it. I'm not going to move, so uh, uh, I'll become invisible because of my integrated cloak. Become invisible if I don't move that turn. And then with uh, Spotter, uh, then my, my turn, if I did not move and I took the lock-on tech action, I can use lock-on as a free action. So I'll put lock-on the suppressor. All right. The suppressor is locked on. Okie doke. Anything else comment? Um, that is it for me. All right, Kestrel or Chimera. Uh, do you I, do you need me to act first to kill something? Is it, I I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention to which one did the I thing. Mean, so they both did a thing, but um, suppressor only has um, it only has impair on me, which it's not going to really impact anything I'm doing. So I'm fine with just ignoring it for a bit. I mean, we should we should take it out uh, as soon as possible. But if I'm, you want to take your turn first, you can then. If it okay. doesn't affect yeah. you, yeah, then. I'm just gonna keep uh, moving toward the um, the X4. So yeah, just go around that thing. <laughs> I, I am. I am. <laughs> I, I was thinking about rushing through it, but I imagine we might there might be points deducted if we just maybe even really... give it a wider berth, possibly. Uh, I mean. I, I, I don't know that points are deducted for something like this. It gives us a straight shot if you do blow it up. Like, if you go through it and you know you're going to be okay, I don't hate That's that. That's true. That's true. I mean, also, the fact That's that the craters point. are still here means they didn't replace them from the previous groups, so we're just making it easier for them, for the future groups. You would think. It's also true. Um, just checking something real quick. Yeah, I'm going to give it wide berth, I think. So, I'm okay, gonna stop. Sorry, I move back. Yep, only only ever do one thing at a time. Don't I'm... don't clump actions, um, because I might have to stop you. Sorry, I, um, I discovered the macro target. and I've been abusing yeah. it now. So, uh, while suppressed, uh, the suppressor has an additional action called moving target. The archer's suppressed target starts to move. It can interrupt your movement with an attack. I didn't um, know that. Oh, okay. Well, now you do. Um, it gains one accuracy on all attacks made as a reaction. So this will be with one additional accuracy. Yeah, let's please kill that thing then. Uh, Chimera, do you have any form of cover? I still have soft cover. All right, so that goes away when? Um... The first time something uses it, right? You No, if you attack or have someone make a save. And we haven't done either of those things yet, either of us. Really? That doesn't happen? Like, Here, nothing I'll, I'll happens if people attack you? Let me read it oh, exactly. It might... uh, at the start of your turn, you gain soft cover. You lose this cover if you attack or force another character to make a save. Oh, That's interesting. It. Okay. It Damn. makes sense, though, because yeah. the skirmisher is like you dashing across the battlefield trying to and using what's there to, you know, protect yourself to reach your target. That makes sense to me. <sighs> All right, so this is just going to be a flat roll because of your skirmisher. Uh, 11 versus your evasion, which I believe is a hit. 
Uh, All right. So if you take yeah. damage, I'm going to use my reaction to um, trigger tactical simulation. Okay. Um, I can't seem to like activate it from my character sheet. So let me just copy and paste the description. Here. You can hit Oops. the little talky button that should put it into our text chat. Yeah, it doesn't do anything for some reason when I click it. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Are you, uh, wait, are you talking to yourself? <laughs> no, I'm not, believe it or not. <laughs> it's a fair question. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so here here's the effect. Um, uh, so I roll a d6 on mm -hmm. a 4+. plus. The attack was actually a simulation predicted by your processor. Yeah, uh, your ally gains resistance to all damage dealt by the attack and may teleport up to three spaces, representing their true location. On a three or less, there's a glitch. Your ally doesn't gain resistance, but can teleport up to three space six spaces. Excuse me. Um so don't, you know, worry too much about how this works in reality. It'll just like mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I rolled a D six, I got a five. Um so the attack was all just a simulation. Um, you gain resistance to that damage. So it'll okay. only be three damage. So it'll be one damage because of armor, right? Yes. Okay. And I'm, then you can teleport up to three spaces. Yeah, let me just um, deduct That's that That's where damage. you were in reality. Interesting. So I am now at 20 of 21 help. Oh, no. Um, okay, yeah. I will teleport... Three spaces closer, I guess. So, so I'm right there. So I'll move to there. Okay, now you can continue with the rest of your action. Yeah, give me one sec. For some reason, all my windows closed. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Um. Okay. And Empire goes away, and um. Let's see. Chimera is going to move up to, um, honestly, I think I only have to move more, two more spaces at this point. Yeah. Oh. So I'll move to there. I'm going to move two steps, two uh, hexes closer to the target. And then, well, actually, you know what? Let me, let me make it the rest of the three, because I just realized something. Um, All right, so you boost. You move, so I, you boost. I, and then I'm going to use my grappling hook to pull the um, pull X4 toward me um, five spaces. All right. Uh, you reach out with your ferris lash, catch on to this little walker mech as it is yanked out of the objective zone and adjacent to you. Huzzah. And um, yeah, that will be it. That will be it for me. All right. I give the um, a uh, the Mac a pat on the head, like caringly. That'll lose you some points. <laughs> I'm, treat I'm treating my ward with respect. That's got to count for something. <laughs> the judges are making notes. For me, emotional people. attachment to yeah, a... watch someone pull out a clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure for, for some of the judges, it's probably okay. For some of the judges, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> all right kestrel that only leaves you on the field who hasn't acted all right uh i'm going to fly over here um mm -hmm. increasing to three which i can change that here there we go. okay uh and i'm going to shoot at the suppressor absolutely uh lock on it does have lock on if you want to spend it yep yeah i will it does uh, so that's one accuracy. Let me double check my gun here. Uh, oh, it, it just it's just reliable one. Whatever. Right, uh, the, well, it's a 20. So. Uh, a 20. I think you'll be surprised to find out totally hits uh, and destroys it utterly. Well, I like doing those things. Excellent um, job. <clears throat> Do we know who's going next after us? Uh, as of right Actually, now, uh, you do not uh, know who is on the field or who will be 
added to the field. You do not know what order reinforcements may or may not I'm sorry. come. I was unclear. The next uh, Lancer team to go. Was it made oh, public? Yes. Do we know? Uh, uh, so I don't remember. let me check, because I think you only know a couple of people's uh, yeah. order that they go in. I will just look at who's after you and let you know if you know it or not. Thank you. Also, Chimera, what's your movement speed normally? Is it like four five. or five? Five. five. OK, uh, I will tell you the group who is going after you did not reveal what number they were. So you do not know who's going fifth. OK, um, um go ahead. No, no, go ahead. If you're going to say something, I, I was going to say is it might make sense. It, it might be a little too late at this point, but like I'm I can pass use football terms i can pass the rock to you yeah i'm not moving you're this is five you move here and then i can go next turn that's what i'm thinking yeah let's let's um tom pass this thing yeah um i'm thinking i'm trying to decide if i want to get clever but i don't have to decide right now so that's it that's my turn yeah i think it's gonna get a lot harder a lot quickly so let's not think too far ahead all right, I believe that's the end of the round. Yes, yes? Mm -hmm. I believe, yes. yeah. So. All right, on to round three. Uh, in At the end of round two, going into round three, four more hatches open up. Um, All four of the hatches have a weird panther-like drone behind them. Uh, additionally, you know the little uh, space that uh, Kestrel, you and Chimera are like really careful to walk around on your way to the objective? Yes. This one? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh, right in the middle of the field. Uh, it slides aside. Um, it does not appear to have been a mine at all, but a hidden cargo elevator. Sure. Of course. That reveals a mech. Uh, this mech is more along the size of y'all uh, and has a large tower uh, kind of drawing up from its back. It is a quadrupedal mech with a large tower extruding from its center up into the air that has a bunch of tiny little holes in it. Holes. Holes. Reminds it's covered those, in holes. Reminds me of those frogs that keep their baby on their back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of like that. Huh. I like mines, I guess. All right. Eek. And since y'all acted at the end, uh, as this round starts, uh, the swarmer, uh, that is the new mech that has come up through the center of the field, will act first. Um, as this like event takes place, you see the expressions of all the people on the monitors above observing change. Uh, and you see Grime specifically smile once this group is released. Now the real game begins. Uh, first thing that's going to happen is the swarmer uh, will dis will deploy a uh, razor swarm as you watch as just a ton of tiny little like harried, bothersome, um, like little uh, like not e they're not even big enough to be drone. It's a swarm of tiny like nanomechs um, that are like buzzing around in a swarm. Um, it creates a blast one razor swarm. On top of Chimera, of course it is. Uh, bu 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 bu. It didn't even include the little guy. It no, it did not include the objective as part of its razor swarm. Uh, it deploys a razor swarm, uh, and uh, hostile characters that start their turn at least partially within the area or that move into it the first time in a round take burn. <laughs> That's your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> the hive can deploy any number 
of razor swarms, each of which persists for the rest of the scene or until you destroy the hive, which is the swarmer. Okay. Um, so that uh. is swarmer's quick action. Uh, and then uh, it is going to... I swear to uh, God is going to attempt to hit Kestrel with a drone barrage uh, as a bunch of drones uh, fly out of the little smokestack it has on its back. These are too large to come out of the little holes on the side. These all kind of funnel up through the top, almost like a mortar firing a shell. A bunch of like tiny, like larger than the swarm, but smaller than the other drones you're fighting kind of go whoop, whoop, whoop fly up out of it and they're all just charging directly through at you through the air kestrel um these target via a tech attack um right. uh do you still have soft cover no i, I shot last turn oh you shot oh okay well then uh that'll be a 17 versus your e-defense uh yeah that'll hit uh, on a success, the target chooses one. Uh, you may become immobilized and impaired until the end of your next turn, or you immediately move up to five spaces in a direction chosen by the hive. Uh, what was the first option? Impaired in something? Uh, yep. You can become immobilized and impaired until the end of your next turn or get moved five spaces in a direction it chooses. Move five, I guess. All right. Uh, it is going to have you fly down to the ground and into the Razor Swarm. Uh, as you enter the Razor Swarm, you will take two burn, Kestrel. So that'll do two damage immediately, and then you'll have to deal with burn at the end of your turn. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, Got that? I think there's actually... Uh, that's danger zone. Get in. Engage. There's got to be burn on here, right? There's not a burn token? Oh, well. Oh, well I think we that's have, because... There's we a, have there's it a as counter. a thing. Yeah, there's a counter yeah. to keep track of it, which I'm doing as well. I just didn't know if there was a little token I could put on you that would be burn, but there is not. Oh, well. All right. So that was its two things. It uh, deployed a razor swarm and then drone barraged you. Uh, and that is its round. Over to you guys. <sighs> Oh, by the way, uh, this is very important to know. As the four panther mechs stalked out of their bays, all of them turned invisible. Mm. Oh. The four panthers are all invisible. You watched four panther drones wander out onto the field and then poof, just tactical cloaked immediately. You can all still sense them on your sensors, but they're permanently invisible. There's one in uh, my sim simulacrum, I was going to say, the though. south one can't be one. invisible. Yes. That is correct. It is still invisible, but the you have enough information from the thing that it is within that the invisibility doesn't give it anything. Yeah. Yeah, so it does... Yeah, just the one doesn't get the invisibility It, it is still bonus. technically invisible, but mechanically it is not invisible. Right, yeah. right, right. Right, right. <clears throat> okay. Uh... Perhaps I shall go. Any one of you. Go ahead. Um, Comet. I, all right. So, uh, uh, yes, Comet will go. I'm going to um, lock on to the prop. Ah, shoot, wrong thing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> lock on to myself. He self destructs. <laughs> yes. Already? <laughs> I'm going to lock on to <laughs> that South pr Prowler. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm going to uh, take another quick action to invade and consume that lock-on. Absolutely. All right, so uh, let's roll that up. Um, if it matters, uh, the invade option I'm going to use is uh, banish, which is at the end of your target's turn, they take two heat for every space they voluntarily move. But I don't think it's going to survive for that long. Um, 
You're just very right. confident in this invade. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, all right. Oops. Wrong thing. Okay. I rolled an 18. An 18 is 10 over its E defense. <laughs> So, nice. yeah, <laughs> so you watch as uh, this thing on your sensors that's tactically cloaked, but you all know exactly where it is, just starts treading forward. And then you start to see it's like mechanical joints, like start to almost almost like it's rusting in real time. They start to stiffen and it can't walk forward anymore. And you see a little bit of steam escape some gaps in it and it just collapses to the ground and the tactical cloak turns off. All right. Um, so it's dead. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I, I I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna overcharge. I want to make the most of this turn. Uh, so that will give me one heat. Um, new comet taking some heat. Yeah. Let me write that down real quick. Uh, and. <clears throat> Uh, for for my overcharge, wait. When you overcharge, you can do the same action that you took before. Yeah, right? there are so no can... limits on what you can do right. uh, for repeats with an overcharge. Right. Okay. Good. Um, then I am going to uh, invade the swarmer. All right. Absolutely. Oh. Um. So let's roll that up. Ooh, ten. Uh, hey, Astro. You learn something very important here. Yeah. Um, th this is this just a so. So first of all, what tech attack were you doing, by the way? Invade. Uh, but what what with oh, what thing? I, yeah, sorry. I was going to do eject power cores. OK, uh, cool. Because you learn two things. One, if the thing you were trying to invade with tried to affect a pilot, it would have been immune to it. Because the other thing you learn is it doesn't have a pilot. Mm. Uh, it is a remote piloted swarmer. There is no pilot in there. And as gotcha. such, it has vulnerability to tech. You get plus one accuracy to hostile tech attacks against it. So go ahead and roll me a d6 and add it to your uh, attack roll. Okay. Uh, I rolled a four, so that'll bring me up to 14. A 14 hits its e-defense. All right, and so I'm using eject power cores. Your target becomes jammed until the end of uh, their next turn. Um, sorry, I copied and pasted jammed. the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got jammed. <laughs> um, uh, uh, as you temporarily disrupt their systems, ejecting ammo magazines and cooling rods. Uh, characters adjacent to your target take two energy damage. This can only be used once per scene on each character. Gotcha. So he, he got jammed. All right. Uh, and now, uh, now that I'm done with the overcharge, it's the end of my turn. I didn't move, so I get a free lock on. And I'm going to... Uh, uh, can I lock on... Though, can I lock on prowlers that I can't see? Uh, digitally mark a target... Choose a character within sensors and line of sight. So I'm going to say no. Um, I believe you can, actually. Let me check something here. Um, there is, uh, funnily, uh, da -da 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 -da. um, in all invisibility allows them to have is a 50% missed chance uh, when you attack when they take an attack uh, and the ability to take a hide action without cover. Um, you still okay. technically have, quote unquote, line of sight to them. OK, uh, cool. So so you can I'll, lock onto them. I'll put a lock on uh, this prowler to the north on the far northeast close, well, the closest one that's still living to the objective. Yes, that's right. All right, and that's my turn. I go invisible. All right, Comet. Invisible. Uh, so it will ping pong back over to the other team's turn. Shh. 
should what blinder? It's not on the uh it's not on the turn list. Oh, sorry. Um he has a skull on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah, notice, I... notice the skull. It blends him yeah, with the no, token um, background. He, he, uh, yeah, he, yeah, I took him off the turn list. He just has a little white skull on him to indicate he's dead. He did not explode so much that his wreckage is no longer there. He's technically still a wreck, which could be uh, difficult terrain, basically. Gotcha. Basically, the way I roll it is if you blow something up so bad, I just delete it off the field. If you destroy it in a way that's non-destructive, it becomes a wreck. Makes sense to me. All right. Uh, so the Prowler in the Northeast just has um, lock-on on it, right? Yep. Okay. That is correct. Uh, it is invisible. Okay, cool beans. Uh, let's look up another thing. Okay. This is. This Lancer FAQ just answered a question I had, so. <laughs> yes, we looked up the errata for Lancer recently, and it's been quite useful, actually, in answering some questions we've had for a long time. Um, so what the is... Prowler that is closest to the objective uh, has is going to activate. That's the one that's going to activate. Uh, it has... Some amount of speed. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, so it's going to move. Uh, and then it is going to prowl, uh, which is a quick action to move spaces equal to its speed and then become hidden. Uh, this movement ignores engagement and does not provoke reactions. Uh, but don't worry about it too much because it's going to spend that immediately because where it shifts to is adjacent to Chimera uh, and while hidden uh, is going to attack you with its claw attack, Chimera. Uh, okay. You still have your skirmisher up, correct? That is correct. So I assume it's a flat roll? Yes, because it'll get uh, accuracy for being hidden. Um... And uh, it will lose accuracy because of your cover. So this is just going to be a straight on roll. Uh, OK, 21 versus your evasion. Uh, yeah, that definitely hits. All right. That will be five damage. So three damage. Uh, that is correct. OK. Uh, that is the Prowler. Uh, back to your team. Uh, let me go. Go for it. All right, All right. you're up. All right. So you guys are having all of that fun, fun time. Join us. Uh, it would literally take me four rounds to reach you. Yeah, it would. <laughs> <laughs> so... No. <laughs> um, all right. Orion is going to activate his core power and just say, okay, let's take control of this situation. Oh. <laughs> you just drove my memory, Jeremy. Um, the Prower takes armor piercing damage because of um, my armor. Just one um, armor piercing. Oh, yeah. The strike armor. Sorry, that's a little late in remembering that. All right, just pulling up its stuff here. 
most things don't charge to melee attack a dude in spikes, but the Prowler said, let's do it. Yeah, no, that will destroy it. <laughs> Kamikaze. I'll just run into all the Prowlers. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, Jeremy. I, I apologize. Okay. Uh, I'm going to activate my core power. Uh, and, uh, immediately... and what does that look like, Orion? Uh, like... Orion's uh, Prometheus normally runs hot, but suddenly it just runs blazing hot with steam erupting from all sides as the ZF4 essentially goes to full charge immediately. All right. All right. Uh, and I am going to do a barrage and I'm going to fire the ZF4 um, immediately uh, because it's an ordnance weapon. Um, then as part of um one of my talents whose name escapes me at the moment but because it is a cannon i move one space before i fire so i'm just going to move one space upward that way mm. comet doesn't happen to be in the path of the zf4 <laughs> the the zf4 is only a line four <clears throat> though right it is a uh, four range per charge Oh, right. So you're at four charges. So it's a line yep. 16. Okay. Yep. 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 Uh, and we are going to target. Uh, and it is accurate. Ooh, I rolled a 10. <laughs> so a 16 <laughs> actually from where you are looks something like this. <laughs> oh, that's so close to my face. <laughs> <laughs> wow look at those numbers though one one two two <laughs> wow yeah that's like some of the lowest you can roll on this thing um so yeah a 10 will hit the swarmers evasion um and even though it is an incredible amount of power you fire at this thing uh you basically what that means to me is you like barely nick it you know like you do fire right at it yeah. but it gets caught up more in the afterwash of the giant blast than in the center of it um right. but yeah it will take okay this is this is going to be new to me uh learning how to tick down health in an easy way in Foundry for this, since I'm keeping track of NPCs in Foundry now. Ba, 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 ba. Can I say minus six? Will that work? Uh, nope. Cancel. That's not. Do I have to do the math myself? I'll be really sad if I have to do the math myself. Bear with me while I try to figure out the easiest way. Take away health on this guy. Is there a button that says I want to take damage or anything like that? Nope, I'm going to have to tick him down myself. OK, I'll have to figure out a way to make that easier for myself the next fight we do. All right, he takes six damage. All right, I am going to follow that up uh with a shot from my uh prototype cannon um which now um because i decided to go further into that tree is also accurate and is smart cool ah your special prototype weapon yes yes mm -hmm. so we're gonna follow that up so what you just did was a quick action Oops. for the solid core then? Uh, no, it was barrage. I'm because uh, the oh. solid core is not a super heavy. It's a main cannon. Cool. And for some reason, that did not actually roll the weapon attack. OK, that's weird. No, it did. It's up at the top. It's really, really high. Up. Oh, oh, 18. Oh, wow. OK, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you definitely you definitely hit. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, what does your prototype uh, prototype weapon look like right now? Um, it kind of looks like the Andromeda heavy patterned laser rifle. It's big and bulky, but Artemis is the one who is aiming it, and it's hooked on the side. So it's kind of like um, like almost like a side, uh, very bulky cannon that's attached. 
Um, <laughs> uh, so you hit with this uh, large cannon that's just kind of hanging off the side that Artemis is piloting herself, basically. And mm-hmm. as she hits the swarmer with the cannon, she'll just remark, huh, looks like my cannon's just as good as yours. As <laughs> oh. It also does six damage to the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, how's it looking? It's looking okay. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, we're going to overcharge and fire again. So that's just going to be one more heat for you? Yep, 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 yep. Funnily, you did a bunch of things that didn't give you any heat, so you're only at four still, huh? Uh, this would put me at four. Yes, yes. This would put me at, f- uh, uh-huh. no, I'm Is at you- three. So. No, you were at three plus one. Yeah. So four. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh. Well, your- the, the prototype weapon doesn't give me heat no, unless your I. Your weapon last round gave you three. Oh, oh, yes. And then overcharge gave you one. You are correct. I'm sorry. Yep. I don't, I don't know where my brain went there. All good? <laughs> uh, all right, Artemis. Round two. I crit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you hit the Swarmer again. Uh, this time, uh, Artemis, you just unleash Artemis by rerouting her, her as much power as she's asking for. Um, and yeah, like totally. Um, oh, so this is an overkill weapon. Yep. So, so it, it, re- it re-rolled heat. for you. <laughs> That's uh, yep. uh, it says only one heat on the thing I'm looking at. Uh, one heat plus the one from overcharge. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two total for this move. Um, yes. So you're you're in the danger zone now. Uh huh. Um, and she fires again, uh, pulling out a little bit more damage this time as her uh, overkill, uh, and on this crit. Uh, basically locks in on the enemy and slams it again, uh, taking another seven damage. Uh, boop. Uh, it is still active, uh, but it is looking heavily damaged now. All right. It is jammed next turn. That is true. Yep. And uh, your over over prototype weapon is a uh, is like a on use weapon, right? You only get like five charges of it or something. Uh, five charges. Well, I have to roll for the number of charges I rolled at the beginning but, of the mission. Right, but um, you did that already, right? Yep. Five charges plus two from engineering, one of the passives, and plus two from my core bonus. So I actually have uh six more shots. <laughs> Neat. Uh huh. Uh, and that's that's all I could do. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Man, that roll on the ZF4. Damn. Oh, yeah, I see that you already ticked off the charges on your thing. Okay, cool, cool, yep, cool, yep, cool. Yep. Uh, it's just when you when you uh, use the weapon, it only says limited five at the bottom. It doesn't give us any insight onto how much ammo you have, I realize. I had to yep, open yep. your sheet to see that, but interesting. I'm keeping track of it in my sheet. All good? All right, so Orion is done. It is back to the enemy's turn. Uh, let's go with the southwesternly prowler that just watched Orion, uh, fire a bunch of shots. Uh, it is going to move. Uh, and then it is going to prowl, uh, moving its speed and becoming hidden. Uh, this invisible hidden thing, Orion, is going to come at you with its claws. Cool. Do you have cover of any sort? Uh, no. Huzzah! It actually gets to use its accuracy. Uh, all right. Um... Ooh, that will be a miss. It rolled a one. 
Dang. <laughs> I never thought I would see the day that when an attack with accuracy Orion. misses yeah. me. It rolled a one and then a three on its accuracy. It only got a total of two. That's like the worst it could basically roll. <laughs> Um, so you watch as this invisible thing just starts like fucking uh, galloping towards you, Orion. And then all of a sudden you're like, OK, I have a lock on it. I have a lock on it. Where did it go? And then next to you, you watch as uh, these giant like optically cloaked claws try to tear into the side of your mech. Uh, but somehow, some crazy way how uh, the Prometheus is able to step off of it just enough for the Prowler maybe it expected you to be even slower than you are because of how little that you're moving and and it wasn't ready for you to move even the little bit you can um but yeah not no no deal no deal for the Prowler okay <clears throat> that's rough buddy all right Chimera or Kestrel um Jay would you mind if I go first because I figure I, I can move I'm planning on moving, and I figure yes. where, where, yes, wherever I move, first. you can pick up. Yep, that's fine. So, um... Just don't do the stupid thing right now. What? What's the stupid thing? Good question. Hey, Camara, <laughs> you start activating your turn? <laughs> yes, I... <laughs> Yes, I'm going. Um, okay, uh, as your turn starts, because you're in the Razor Swarm, you take yep. two burn. I will subtract that right now. So I'm at 15 out of 21. Okay, and then um, I'm going to get out of the burn. Huh. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to move forward... Hold on, I, are you doing the stupid all right, thing? He's as doing, you the do, stupid thing. He doing the stupid uh, thing. You drag the uh, objective through the yeah, razor swarm. It, it follows you directly, Chuck. Oh. <laughs> Why did you tell me the stupid thing? I. It, it literally is tagging behind that? you. Who follows that, Jay? I honestly didn't feel the need to. I felt condescending <laughs> when I said, don't do the stupid thing, Chuck. I'm it was like, like, uh, I'm like, how could he possibly? I thought you were doing an Ocean's Eleven thing where you, you deliberately said, don't do the stupid thing when there wasn't a stupid thing to do. I've never seen that movie. There's always a stupid thing to do. <laughs> um, so uh, X4 will take two burn. Can it even make a save? Uh, it will auto fail the save. Yeah, I would assume it would. <sighs> uh, actually, I think it just rolls a. It just doesn't have a bonus, right? Yeah. Like technically, actually, technically, it should have rolled against your Ferris Lash Chimera. It just would roll a d twenty with no bonus. Um, Wait, I'm not going to roll it back in this that field far. That I'm in? No, there oh, isn't. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about for its burn at the end of its turn. Uh, which technically think... is going to be at the end of Chimera's turn now, because this is the turn on which it moved, basically. Is there any way we can clear burn off of it? Yeah, if Chimera stabilizes, he can clear a condition on an adjacent out, well, mm -hmm. adjacent character. Yeah. I mean, you have a 50-50 chance of it clearing its burn. I mean, I'm fine I will, with spending... I will, I will be kind and say, even though it can move multiple times per round, it will only roll a burn check once per round. Okay. I mean, I'm fine with spending... I was planning on overcharging anyway, so, like, I'm fine with using a full action to stabilize me in the, in the X4, just so that we don't have to worry about this. You do you, boo. You want to do that now, Chimera? Yeah, let's just get it out of the way. So I, I will remove the burn, and I will remove the burn off of the X4. All right, so you take the full action to stabilize? Yes. Uh, you will remove... Uh, so, stabilize. So yeah, you go can ahead. You either clear the burn on yourself or on the mech. You cannot... Yeah. on Or on the allied mech. You cannot do both. Uh, That's correct. Well, okay, target takes priority, so... Uh, but, uh, Chimera, you can still clear your heat, I believe. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll clear my heat. So you can clear your heat and its burn if you want to. Yep, let's do that. All right, cool. X4 is no longer burning, and it took a little bit of damage. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not done yet, though, but yeah. The, well, hold on. Because there's no insight checks in this game, I get to just tell you things. Hooray! Um, you all watch as, uh, as Chimera drags the objective through this. Uh, you watch Ethic just put her hand over her face as she watches this happen. <laughs> I mean, if we're being perfectly it's honest, fun. this is in character for Evelyn. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm playing the character correctly. That that's the way I look at it. Whatever you gotta tell yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it, Chimera. It does feel very Evelyn. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna overcharge, so I'll get one heat. The heat I just clear, I guess, effectively. And then I'm going to um, skirmish the swarm swarmer with my um, battle axe. So you overcharge to get that one heat back? Correct. I don't think All I right. actually removed it from the character sheet. Oh, I All did. Right, well. Put it back on. Uh, okay. And then, I don't know if this is, anyone else is seeing this, but when I close my character sheet, it closes weirdly, and it, it's bugging me a little bit. Um, whatever. Anyway, uh, I'm going to move forward, and then I am going to activate beam protocol. So... Um, this will be armor piercing, and it's the first. How do you attack. move forward? Oh, from skirmisher. your ability. Okay. Yeah, skirmisher cool. lets me move forward one space. Yep. Um. Yeah. So it's the first. It's the first attack of the round for me. So I get um, accuracy from duelist. Okay. Absolutely. And then this is armor piercing. So um, hopefully it'll do extra damage. Let's see, mech. Uh, Oh, yeah, I got a target there. Seventeen. Uh, Seventeen will hit. And it will take five damage. All right, it takes five damage. As you yeah. slam into the side of the jammed uh, swarmer, uh, almost cleaving it in twain. So close. And I get a Battlemaster dice for that. Uh, now I'm done. All right. Cool beans. Uh, now we will go to the last remaining Prowler who hasn't acted. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Roll your burn check. Oh, yeah. Roll your burn check. Uh, engineering save. Thank you. Uh, engineering save. No modifiers, correct? No, it's just, you know, an 19. engineering roll. Yes, you clear your burn without taking additional damage. Hooray. I think I wish heat was called plasma or something, because be, burn be cool. and heat being yeah. so similar is, like, confusing. But if, I wish, if, like... Oh, yeah. yeah, I... Corrosion? I, heat... I feel like heat needs to be heat because the idea of overheating a mech is, is what it is. You know what I mean? I feel like burn could have been change it i mean burn's yeah. just a, a condition you know yeah they could yeah, name the condition anything you sure know? yeah so, so, but something else i yeah i getcha uh all right let's get to that prowler this miles prowler, prowler. um it is How going tails does to, it have uh just just the one invisible one mm. that's going to move and then Ooh. What, you mean it doesn't want to run through the mine? Please do so. It goes invisible and hidden using its prowl move. Well, it was already invisible. It now moves its speed and becomes hidden. <laughs> All right, Kestrel, you're the only person remaining who hasn't acted. All right. Uh, is burn at the start of the turn? 
Uh, you, uh, from starting your turn in the Razor Swarm, will take two burn from starting within it. Okay. Uh, uh, and then I think that brings your burn up to a four total, unless you clear it. Okay, that, okay. Uh, yeah, the check itself is at the end. That's right, Orion. Okay. All right, uh, I'm going to boost to move up to the thing. Um, All right, you boost up to the objective. I will... I will clear something up just in case you want to change your mind. Sure. So the way the objective moves is very specifically stated. When a character starts their turn adjacent to the objective, it moves with them when they make their standard movement. Oh, you have so to you start did, your turn. If you did not start your turn adjacent to it, it will not move with you. Got it. Okay. Uh, then I will just move. I thought I did not understand mm-hmm. that. Thank you. Um... Yeah, I'll just move then, and then, uh, I know I, I ask this, like, every time, but with mounted weapons, if I skirmish, I fire the full mount? You fire everything that's on the mount, so if it has, like, two pistols on it, you fire both. Okay, and a barrage is all of my mounts? It's or specifically ha- two we- two mounts, I think. Two mounts. Yeah, I, I, have like I an think it's integrated... specifically like two weapons, but uh, I have the quick combat reference: a barrage, attack with two weapons, or a single super heavy weapon. Um, the difference is if you fire an auxiliary weapon, specifically, you get to fire an additional auxiliary weapon along with it. If they're on the same mount as each other, yeah. If there's an auxiliary mount on the weapon that you fired. You get okay. to fire the auxiliary with it. Yeah. And I, I have an integrated mount that has yes. another pistol on it. And I believe that fires with my auxiliary. I think yours has special rules. I think so. Which may, I think that's why I keep getting confused by it. But I think if I skirmish, I, I fire three pistol shots. Let me pull up CompCon. I think that has the exact wording in here. Maybe. It's on your mech that you have it, right? It, I would think so. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's what I got is one of my core systems for our last license level upgrade. I don't know where to see that other than just the fact that I have the integrated mount here, though. Um, you got that from the uh, uh, the core upgrade. Yeah, the integrated thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, funnily, the core upgrades are on you or something. Not, like, necessarily the Mac. Tactical profile? Oh, I think I've got it here, yeah. Maybe. Core bonuses, here we go. Your mech gains a new integrated mount uh, with capacity for one auxiliary weapon. This weapon can be fired one around as a free action. Oh, when you fire any other weapon on your mech that see that's yeah. why we were confused you have special rolls for yours Got it. so that gun goes off once per round when you fire anything okay perfect okay thank you i'll never ask that again <laughs> <laughs> um all right well i'm going to Yeah, I will just, I'll just shoot at it. This is fine for now, I think. Absolutely. Uh, so that'll be first... three shots then, right? Because you have uh, Ox Ox on your other weapons as well. Yes, it'll be three shots, all pistol. Um, the first one will have two accuracy for being the first auxiliary shot in a round, and each one has accuracy for me being within three range of it as well. Uh, close quarters. Ooh, so, wow, nice. Very accurate. So, yes, yes, accurate. So first one is a 12? Uh, a 12 uh, will hit its evasion. Yay. 
Um, so that'll do three damage? Three damage, max roll, yep. So slam, okay, one shot. Uh, let's do one accuracy here, a 17 then uh, for two more damage. A 17 will hit for another two damage. Ooh, and a crit. Nice. For two damage. Oh. <laughs> Listen, uh, we can't have everything, all right? <laughs> Kestrel, uh, as mm -hmm. you quickly fire, fire, fire at the swarmer that has been bogged down by your allies, what does it look like when you finish it off? Um, I would say it, it's just like reeling from Chimera's hit. And, and I shoot like a couple drones that are starting to shoot out and I see one that hasn't left yet that's starting to go off on the side and I shoot that as it explodes and then chains into it. And you just watch as down its little smokestack of like like hive and drone deployment. You just see a bunch of tiny explosions from the things inside of it all going like critical. And it almost is like a fuse down to the center of its body that just poof, engulfs itself in a tiny fireball as a charred remnant crashes to the ground. All right, Kestrel, anything else you want to do? Kestrel? Yeah, sorry. I'm looking at my stuff. I have one more quick action to do. Um, can, and I am looking through what options right. I have for it. Um, what range is this? Where's the range? Range five. Eh. Yeah, I guess that's it. I can't really do much else with my quick action, I don't think. So, yep, that's it. That'll be it. And then I will roll my engineering. Which is here. No accuracy or anything, I don't think. But I rolled nope. a 10. But a 10 is just enough. Luckily, that little plus one you have on your check uh, brought you from failure to success. Um, as you do eliminate that four burn without taking any additional damage. Perfect. OK. All right. And at the end of round three, going into round four is where we're going to call this first combat session tonight. Uh, when we will come back, we will pick up from here. Sounds great. Cool. All Sounds right. Good. Well, we will see you all next time. Bye bye. 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 bye.